Nice, you're joking, Dan. That's a really nice bike. <laughs> Ever since the capture of my 31 pound personal best pike, I have dreamed of catching another fish of that sort of caliber. The reality though is that fish of that size just don't come around very often. They are a rare, rare creature. The problem is, is that normally, really big pike get caught from still waters. It's where they don't have to swim against the flow, it's where there's often masses of food available to them quite easily and they just end up growing bigger and heavier. Local to my house I have a number of still waters but they're very small and just don't tend to have particularly good pike fishing. There's one exception, a big reservoir where my brother managed to land an absolutely massive pike. We didn't actually have scales the day that he landed it but I would have said it was mid, mid to upper 20s without doubt. But like I say, other than that reservoir, most of my pike fishing tends to be done on my local muddy river. I think it was mid to late October when my quest for a big pike properly began. In fact, one of the first sessions I did down on this river, I managed to catch a really nice pike, not quite the 20 pounder I was after. I think it must have been 16, 17 pounds, but an incredibly marked and patterned fish. And yeah, that, that really kick-started my campaign and uh, got me off on the right track, gave me some confidence. As we moved from autumn into winter, the fishing definitely got harder. After that big fish, I kind of just struggled to catch anything decent. I was catching pike, I was getting numerous bites, but just couldn't get through to you know, the, the bigger fish. Towards the end of last season, I started fishing more with my friend, Ryan. He was soon to become a father, and as we knew that, uh, he wanted to make the most of his free time, get out on the river and fish loads. We went out together almost every week. Sometimes we fished twice a week. And yeah, Ryan had a spectacular season. Look at that. Me, on the other hand, I struggled. Um, still catching fish but most of them were pretty tiny. That's what you call a double hook. <laughs> what is going on? Winter came to an end and with that, I changed my attentions to sort of warm water species like carp, tench and barbel. The summer was really good, did loads of fishing, but didn't really come down here and certainly didn't think about pike until the first few frosts of the year came in, uh, just before Christmas. My first pike session of the year was with a new friend of mine, Callan. Oh, it's an absolutely freezing morning. I'm here with my friend uh, Callan, if you can see him there. Uh, we are out pike fishing today. Hopefully, we're gonna get ourselves a big crocodile. Now he's only really been into fishing, I think the last couple of years, but his obsession is with pike. And seeing as the conditions look good, we got down the river to give it a good go. Because the river we're fishing today is tidal, it can be very shallow at some times, like now. And then later on in the day, it could be really, really deep. And the time which we found to be really good for pike fishing is when the tide is switching from low to high. So it's, like it's flowing out and getting lower and lower and lower, and then it slows right down, stops, and it starts flowing back in again. That little like changing point always seems to be really good. And I think today, we got here at a pretty good time. How are we doing? Yep. Uh, we've just got here, so not yet. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some. Oh, we've got, we're on. It's not a bad fish, That's bro. Not a bad fish at all. Did you see it splash? Yeah, I did see it splash. That was mental. Oh damn! No, that's a good fish. That'll do for a first bite. <laughs> that will do. Well, let's hope anyway. Oh. <laughs> Oh, damn, they go in the snags. Hey, you know, that's nice. That is. That's really nice. Pretty nice fish. It's quite a steep bank, isn't it? 
<laughs> Going again. <laughs> Got some power, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Callan, that is nice. Right. Get that in. Get that in the net. You can do it, bro. Wicked. <laughs> Not been here very long. And we've already landed a pike. Whew. Nice. Good job. What a monster. We're saying about 14 pounds. Yeah, round about that. Definitely over 10. <laughs> First pike of the day. Not too shabby, eh? Thank you very much, Carl, for bringing me to this spot. Great to catch a pike so early on in the session. We go home now. <laughs> Literally. See you later, mate. <laughs> no, there's fish in here twice as big as that, so. Wow. Um, that was a great fight as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It was already worth waking up early for. Thank you for <laughs> making me get up so early. <laughs> yeah, being on the river at dawn just Literally. seems to be an amazing time to catch pike. And we've got one already. That session was hectic. I remember uh, we were fishing two rods each. I was taking the upstream rods, he was taking the downstream rods. And on a couple of occasions, we were getting bikes, running up and down the bank, watching the floats go under. And in fact, as well as catching a number of fish, Callan actually landed a couple of really good ones. Oh, that's big. Hey, that looks bigger than the last one. What do you reckon? 15 pounds, should we say? I reckon. We forgot the scales, but another one. I was convinced it was the same fish. But it turns out it has it isn't the same fish because it's we look back on the pictures and it's different. So. Yeah. It's oh, um monster. it's pectoral fin is very distinctive on this one. Yeah. And the other one was was fine, wasn't it? it wasn't. Yeah. So two different fish, similar sort of size. I am very happy. <laughs> that was an awesome, awesome fish. Oh. Oh. It's a bit sticky. It's a bit muddy down here. <laughs> Whilst Callan did really well, landing himself a couple of good double figure pike, I was just kind of struggling. I did catch, but once again, just little ones. How about that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what a beast. Can't believe it. Monster! Uh, Callan's fish were all right, but this is really what we were after. <laughs> Around Christmas time, things got really busy. I actually remember having so much to do, and then all of a sudden, around Christmas to New Year sort of period, myself, Alex, and Omi all ended up getting ill. It was not ideal. But soon after that, into I think early January, uh, I had a couple of meetings with our fishing sponsor, Corda. Corda have supported this channel ever since we left our jobs to do YouTube full time. And we're like, we were planning uh, trips to the United States for this year. We've been organizing a, amazing fishing adventures into Europe, loads of cool fishing videos that we're gonna be making this year. And it kind of just sunk in that this has been made possible by the guys at Corda. So a massive shout out to them, it means a lot. With all of that out the way, with my meetings sorted, with uh, all of the busyness of our pond build kicking off as well, I wasn't really thinking much about getting out back on the river again. In fact, the pond build is kind of very time consuming. I'm at the house pretty much every day. We've got deliveries coming in, we've got filters, we've got pumps, we've got blocks, we've got concrete, and the garden kind of looks like a bomb has hit it and there's just mud and dirt and cement and sand everywhere. But I guarantee you that in two or three months, it will all have been worth it. But anyway, that's the story for another day. What I want to talk to you about is the pike fishing. So a friend of mine, uh, Dan, he rung me up and said, let's go pike fishing. I was like, yeah, sweet, yeah, where should we go? Like, have you got any good recommendations? Because every time I go to my local river, I just catch little ones. He was like, oh, we could still go to your local, you know, it seems good. Everyone else that you bring pike fishing seems to catch big ones. And I thought back, I had taken Ryan fishing and he had caught big pike. I had gone fishing with Alex and he had caught big pike. I had taken Callan fishing and he had caught big pike as well. And I thought, well, you know what, based on that previous experience, if I bring you, Dan, you're probably gonna catch a big one. I'm walking down the track to the river once again, this time joined by my friend Dan, who I used to work with when I was at Nash. And uh, yeah, we haven't seen each other in quite a while, so thought we'd do a bit of pike fishing. It's very cold this morning. Too cold. No, yeah. it's not too no. cold. No, you can't have it too cold. When you're pike fishing, the cold doesn't really matter. If anything, sometimes those frosty mornings are the best ones. Looks beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. 
given that my previous session fishing with Callan had been so productive, I decided to bring Dan straight back to the exact same section of the river. Now, is the tide coming in or going out? I can't figure that out. Oh, um, there's a little impact here as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah, like a side stream. That, li that little pool there yeah. can be good. But most of the bikes when I was here last was down that way um, by those overhanging willows. So Dan got his, his rods out. I cast a couple of rods out as well. And uh, yeah, we were just getting ready to sit down and relax and chat and wait a few hours when all of a sudden one of the rods was away pretty much instantly. Dan had a bite on the uh, big roach dead bait. Go on. Oh, that's not bad, Dan. We saw it was a good fish, but then just as it came up to the surface, it thrashed its head and the hooks came out. Whoa, no. That was really not, that was a double. Oh, he's all right. <sighs> I thought I, literally just as he, before he come off there, and I just could see he was just, only just, just lift hook. I think him a lot. I don't like giving them long, though, do you know what I mean? You don't want them to swallow the hook. No, I'd rather hit them early and yeah. lose them at the net like that than that. <laughs> Why did I think I could drop the camera on the oh, ground no. and scoop it off? It wouldn't, <laughs> no, it wouldn't even count anyway, really, I would it? I don't know what's happening. I just heard this <laughs> dum and that was the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the very expensive camera. Oh, and I lost my dead bait. Oh, why did I think that I could just basically jump down into the water with the net and just try and scoop it up? It really didn't work. Quite a few hours passed without any more bites and as things were quite slow, I was starting to worry. You know, we'd kind of talked the session up and we'd said, oh, you'll catch a big one, Dan. You're fishing with me. I'm going to catch little ones. You're going to catch big ones. Well, the little ones turned up eventually and I had a couple of bites. After those fish, not much happened. The day was slipping away and the light was going to be fading soon. So we decided to move elsewhere. I wanted to go further downstream to another section of the tidal where I know there are really big pike and uh, I've seen them before and I felt confident. Alex though, he spoke to me and said, no, no, go upstream, uh, fish that little stretch, you know the one. And I was like, really? I just didn't feel it. it I, just didn't, I just didn't think that I was going to catch a good fish from that stretch. So I thought about it a little bit and, um, and Dan said, Nah, Alex is the better angler. Listen to him. <laughs> so we jumped in the car and drove to the new stretch. We fished the new stretch for a while and in the back of my mind, I was just thinking, I told you Alex, this stretch is rubbish. We're not gonna catch anything. Nothing was really happening. Uh, spirits were just starting to, you know, slip. And uh, we were talking about going home, maybe going and getting some food. And then out of nowhere, what looked like a reasonable pike shot up, grabbed Dan's bait, and zoomed off with it. Wow, that was that was cool. Did you see that? Did you see it all happen then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him hit from under. He come out from under it. Is he a good one? Uh, it's bigger than the last. <gasps> You're joking, Dan. That's really nice. Yeah, we need the net, don't we? Oh, no, yeah, no, we need to get that in the net, Dan. That is a beast. That is a really nice pike. <laughs> As he played the fish, it gradually got bigger. As you net it, we have to get this in the net. A fish that had hit the bait and we thought it was about eight pounds suddenly became a 12 pounder. And as it went into the net, we were all looking at it going, that's actually really quite big. It's kind of took me by surprise. I was so like, cause I saw it hit. I was like, it's a little bit bigger than the last one, but maybe eight pound, nine pound. I t it's, it's not eight pounds, Dan. It's a good one, and I'm in the bog. It's so good when you see them hit like that, though. Oh, wow. 19. 19 and a half on 19. Just, no, just under nine. Oh, it's not on the, it's not off the ground, Alex. Yes, yeah, oh, like, it's nearly about 19. 19.8. Wow. Do you know what that is as well? What? A PB. No way. Yeah, that's what we pike. wanted, a PB pike. Now, look how long that fish is. Whoa. <laughs> Might as well be a 20 it pounder. Just, it just kept growing and growing, didn't it? <laughs> how big was it? Uh, 19.8. Thank you very much for taking me to your spots, Carl. Thanks for coming, Dan. This is why we should do it more often. Yes. 
And so once again, I was happy to see a good friend of mine catch a personal best from this river. I still haven't caught a big one myself and maybe I'd be better off just fishing on my own since if I'm the only person here, then if a big pike comes into my swim, then I'm the only one who could catch it. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter. I think seeing the smile on my friend's faces was probably enough. Good job. Thanks, mate.